welcome to my youtube channel it's your girl ochipo today we're going to be talking about worship to be honest that's all we talk about on this channel worship faith and lifestyle if that is something that you're interested in please hit the subscribe button if you are new hello hello and a very warm welcome to you it's your girl ochipo we discuss all things worship and faith on here if you're new hit the subscribe button now in this video I'm going to be starting a series on what is worship, how to worship, why we worship. Specifically today though, what is worship? The first time we see that word worship in the Bible is when it references Abraham bringing his son Isaac for a sacrifice. God is inviting Abraham to give up this thing to him. So there we link worship and sacrifice together. What is sacrifice? Sacrifice is giving up something for something else in hope that you get a higher reward a better reward let's rewind that story then all the way to the beginning in genesis when adam and eve are in the garden and there is this beautiful picture that's painted god and adam and eve having time together in fellowship in communion and it says he came down in the cool of the evening to meet with Adam, right? So that's how they lived life, you know, that's how they lived life. But then they sinned, they ate of the fruit of um, the knowledge, the tree of knowledge of good and evil. And as a result, they fell out of fellowship because when God came again and said, in the cool of the evening, Adam, Adam, where are you? Adam says, sorry, Lord. I'm naked, I can't see you, I'm naked. And I can imagine that God's heart broke in the moment. <sighs> and he's like, how do you know you're naked? And then he knew then that they had eaten of the tree of knowledge of good and evil. In that moment then, Father God decides to kill an animal. And it's, it's interesting, why did he kill an animal? He killed an animal and he made covering from the skin of the animal and he used it to cover Adam and Eve and then they could have conversation. So that's the first animal that's ever killed in the Bible. Showing us a picture of another lamb that will be killed later on. Stay with me because that will come more useful into the story later on in the series. And so a precedent was set. Adam and Eve were removed from the garden. They couldn't have face-to-face -face communion. But then we later on, we see them having a child, Cain, two children, Cain and Abel. Cain tries to commune with God. He sacrifices something, he builds an altar, but then he brings vegetables and he brings grain to offer to the Lord. And Abel, the second son, sacrifices a lamb. And uh, uh, God rejects Cain's sacrifice, but accepts Abel's sacrifice. I used to wonder as a child why. So what that is painting to me is that there is a type of sacrifice that the Lord wants. Um, not every sacrifice is acceptable. If you keep looking at the story with people that worshipped God before the time of uh, Moses, so Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, they all sacrificed animals. So that was the offering that was acceptable to the Lord. That was the, the worship, the sacrifice that was acceptable to God. Now, <clears throat> Moses is the man God used to, to deliver Israel out of the hands of the Egyptians. So he sent Moses to Pharaoh and he, to Pharaoh and he said, um, let my people go that they may worship me. Let my people go that they may worship me. And you know, there's a bit of a power struggle. Pharaoh was like, nah, you're all right. These guys are building me pyramids and they're building my civilization. I'm not, I'm not letting them go. And God was like, yeah, no, you're gonna let them go. Um, and you know, Moses did this cool thing with his rod by the power of God and Pharaoh's magicians did this is a cool thing and they're like well you know I can do it too so why why should I let them go 
and he wouldn't listen you know and god was like all right i'm gonna visit you with plagues and so there was locusts there was boils there was all these things that came on the on, on the people of egypt the egyptians but pharaoh was like nah i'm still not gonna let them go until the firstborn son of the egyptians were killed can you imagine oh man that was brutal but then he's like all right all right you lot can go bye bye be gone and so moses takes the children of israel out of egypt through the land and they come into this mountain and the presence of the lord descends upon this mountain and moses invites the people of god to come closer and they're like no 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 that is scary i don't want to touch that they hadn't been used to the presence of god adam and eve were used to the presence of god but they come out so there's all these generations of people who don't know what the presence of god is like so they were scared moses on the other hand who'd met the lord on that same mountain he'd started to know what god was like so he wasn't afraid to go in and so god says all right you come up and i'll tell you how i want you to worship and then you can go back down and tell the people so moses goes up and God gives him a whole list of rules on how to worship, you know. But there is this emphasis on animals being killed, right? And the blood of the animals being sprinkled on the people. The priest who kills the animal has a specific ceremony. He has to put on a specific garment. All the people, all his children who are going to be serving in the temple where God is going to come down, they have a specific way of doing things and then the wider the wider community you know there's a specific way of how they're going to come but the emphasis is on the people and god meeting together so that's actually what worship is a space where god and his people meet together but because of sin for that to happen something needs to die what does that mean for us now in this generation do you have to go and kill animals no you will be put in prison if you did that if you start killing animals at your back garden rspca is gonna put you in prison and they will think you are weird and stupid moreover even if you killed an animal now you won't be able to access god through that animal because god had already sent jesus to die okay God has sent Jesus to die and Jesus died the final perfect sacrifice so through Jesus through that sacrifice we can worship but if we're not killing an animal how you know how, what practically what does that look like it means anytime you come to meet with God you must make yourself aware that the only way you're coming in is through the sacrifice of Jesus so in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus by your son Jesus we come by your mercy by the blood of the lamb we come now apart from that something always needs to be put down something needs to die I, I mean it's just a precedent that has been set we can't create our own so what needs to die? So what do we need to give up is what I'm asking. What do we need to give up to come into the present? Sometimes that is time. You know, we need to make out time. We need to say maybe on a Friday night, instead of going out to party, I'm going to give that time to the Lord. I'm going to sacrifice that time. I'm going to give up what I expect that I'm going to receive from partying. And I'm going to come to the Lord instead. In doing that, in doing that, there's two things. You activate faith. You're saying, God is going to meet with me here. I want God to meet with me here. Okay, that's number one. Two, you're saying that you hope to receive more from meeting with God than maybe going out partying or sleeping an extra hour in bed. Okay, so that's what you're doing. That's what true worship is. It's not necessary with the song because sometimes we sing but our heart is not engaged we're not sacrificing something we're not letting go in our mind okay sometimes we have to-do lists running in our head xyz things to do 
we need to sacrifice all those things the bible says god is the rewarder of them that diligently seek him and it also says for you to come to him you must faith you must have faith to believe that he is and he exists so there it is he rewards people who seek him and you must have faith that he is there to meet with him so that is what true worship is having faith that there is a god that he's going to meet you when you make time for him and that he's going to truly satisfy you more than the thing that you are sacrificing that's what i think worship is what do you think worship is i'm going to put down the scriptures that i've referenced in the comment section and i want you to let me know what you think worship is if you've enjoyed this video please give it a thumbs up share it with your friends and if you'd like to know more hit the the bell the notification bell so that we can have a little bit more discussion on this right guys it's been real thank you so much for kicking in with your girl today don't forget to like share subscribe and i'll see you on the next video